Hey Saab people, I have been super excited to make this video and show this to you. In today's video, we're gonna be doing an unboxing and an install on this Mishimoto radiator. It's technically for a 350Z from 07 to 09, but I've seen some other people in Saab groups say that they've had success installing this. Uh, everybody I've reached out to who has installed it never got back to me on how it fit. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a shot. This channel has been officially sponsored by Mishimoto, so I'd like to just say thanks Mishimoto for sponsoring the channel. Can't wait to move forward with them. Shipping times are super quick. I've had fantastic customer service. I've already made multiple purchases. I'm gonna go ahead and get right into the unboxing here and we can see uh, how this looks uh, in comparison to the DO88 I have on the front of the car. Let's go ahead and dive right in and get this thing open. Here I've got sponsorship package. So that comes with some neat stuff for me. First impressions that I'm noticing here is how very light this radiator is. I'm actually incredibly surprised. The DO88 radiator is much heavier than this. Somebody on Facebook said that with this and two 14 inch fans, uh, they were six pounds lighter than the stock radiator and fan setup. Uh, which I was very impressed by. I'm getting a little bit into weight reduction myself. I don't want to go super overboard with it. This is also a top flow radiator. The DO88 has the tanks on each side, just like the stock one. I know that in technicality, the top to bottom flow radiator versus a side to side has less cooling ability. But with this radiator being larger than the stock one, it's already going to cool better. It's cooler than stock and with bigger fans on the front, it's going to be lighter than stock. pretty impressed by the uh, quality of the welds I'm seeing. Um, most people with SOBs tend to go the DO88 route. There isn't any other options for radiators or intercoolers, anything of that nature. This setup here is cheaper than the DO88 is. Um, the DO88 was coming in right about 500 bucks with shipping. Uh, that's including the shipping. And this one was coming in, I think just under 400 with shipping. So a little bit of a price difference with two 14 inch fans and the radiator, uh, we were the exact same price as just the DO88 radiator itself. Very good looking radiator. Uh, you've got that classic Mishimoto M right on the front and it also says Mishimoto on the top. So if you happen to see it from the top side, you're gonna catch eyes, which is gonna be really nice. Uh, with this sponsorship that I have going, I'm trying to work with Mishimoto a little bit. I bug them every now and then and I'm trying to get them to come out with products for uh, our 2.8 SOBs. Let me see if I can go find a stock radiator uh, laying around that I can match this up to. Here you can see all three radiators lined up. The far right is the stock one, middle is DO88, and the far left is the Mishimoto of course. And uh, what you can see here is the difference in thickness, just how much more thin the Mishimoto is. I'm also about to show you the differences in where the tubes are set up. You can also see the damage on the bottom of the DO88 radiator on the right where it was leaking pretty bad. <laughs> I don't know how I didn't catch on to this uh, already. This stock radiator here has a third port on it. Let me turn it around. So this is the hot side of the radiator. And down here, there's a port that goes to the oil cooler. This side over here is the cold side. So we are gonna have to tee in this uh, to one of these lines here. I can look into that, see how the flow works in this thing, uh, retrofitted to the car. What I wanted to see was how far apart the tabs on the top and bottom stuck out. I wanted to see if they were the same distance apart. Yep, and unfortunately they are not the same distance apart. I don't think that it's gonna be a huge issue. And it looks like the tube connections are two inches closer to center on the Mishimoto. Right here, I'm doing a quick unboxing of the fans. And to be honest, guys, I can't even tell you how crazy light these fans are. I, I'm so excited to put these on the car to get that extra little bit of weight reduction because the stock fan is wildly heavy. Anyway, guys, I will get going with this and tell you what I did to get it in. First, we're gonna obviously start with the removal of the front bumper. Now we're gonna work on removal of the bracket that's between the crash bar and the top plate between the two headlights. Then we're gonna take off both the crash bar and the top plate in order to get nice, easy access to that intercooler and radiator setup while it's all draining. Leave this all one thing, pull the whole thing out of here, and we'll see what we can do with your, your other radiator to start with. Yeah, we'll have to. 
Here you can see the DO88 setup. Now I'm gonna go ahead and show you the Mishimoto and a dry fit. It is definitely not gonna be able to sit this close because the cold side feed tube is running right into the subframe. So we're gonna have to make custom brackets and sit this out probably an extra three to four inches, which is great because it's gonna make more space between the engine and the radiator. Next up is to get rid of the two old top radiator brackets because we may have to weld in a new support up top and we'll need as much space as possible to do that. We're now taking a step back looking at the radiator again. We moved it closer to the engine this time, trying to see if we could fit it that way, and it is still just too tall, and the outflow is still running into the subframe on the bottom. Before we get any further into this, we're gonna to need to make the assembly with the fans, the radiator, and the intercooler to know how much space we're gonna to need to create in the front and where exactly we're gonna to have to weld these brackets into place in order to fit this thing. It just so happens that the radiator holds the intercooler near perfectly the only problem is that I got into a front end collision and the intercooler is bent. Dad had the idea to use a 20 ton jack with a 12 ton strap in order to straighten out the intercooler and it worked beautifully. Yep, that's straight. Yeah, that worked really good, nice and flat before and after you can see how much better that bend is. After this footage you see here, we noticed it is still a little bit twisted, so we fine tuned it a little bit more after. We've now at this point drilled two holes through the top of the intercooler, and we are now gonna put some bolts through the top of the intercooler into the threaded holes on the radiator, and it fits perfectly. We just needed a couple of washers to make up the space in between. Good, it's really good. It's not something wrong. Make spacers here, and drill on top, up and through there. We found a rubber puck laying around, so we decided to use the bandsaw in order to make some flat spacers on the bottom brackets for mounting the intercooler to the radiator. Nice. whack a -mole. <laughs> There, one side done. Looks pretty good. I'm going to show you here, we made sure that there was a perfect gap in between for proper airflow and we didn't want any contact with the fins so that there would be no leaks. We laid out the new fans on top of the radiator just to get an idea of how this is going to fit and we decided it's going to be best to make a giant aluminum bracket top and bottom to get this in. So we found an aluminum piece here so we're going to have to cut it into flat sections in order to use it properly. It's going to be three inches wide and we're going to mount it from about here all the way across it's going to have a divot cut out of it so it can fit around this 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 and it's going to sit flush on this hole over here and this hole over here and then it's going to screw onto the fan and we're going to do something similar on the bottom as well we used a hole saw some transfer case fluid as temporary cutting fluid point at it looks up pretty darn good we did the same sort of deal on the bottom bracket, except we used the angle iron section so that we would be able to bolt through the bottom supports just like this. Don't forget guys, a nice clean workbench is vital to workplace safety. So we now have a nice smooth all the way around piece. I take a file and I'm gonna go ahead and cut down on this inner lip all the way along here because it is catching my finger. You get those cut down so they're not sharp. Nice and smooth all the way around. Almost entirely square like pipe of aluminum. And now we have this beautiful bracket that we went ahead and fabricated using our old farm equipment that we have here. Alrighty guys, the new fan assembly with the Mishimoto Slims is six pounds exactly, even including our brackets. And the old stock assembly is 12.3 pounds on the dot. So we have deleted about 6.3 pounds from the front of the car using just the fans. Right now, my dad and I are trying to find the best place to mount this. Unfortunately, on the top, we're running into the intake pipe where the top hose needs to go in and where the bottom hose goes in, we're running into the subframe. So we're having to pull it way far forward towards the crash bar. 
So what do we have for material we can use? We need to have a piece of material to go all the way across, pitch into this, yep. into here, yep. and then we can weld it or even bolt it for now, because this is gonna be a trial and error once we get everything fine tuned and we'll weld it in place. Here you can see we've made enough clearance on the bottom subframe to this port. So that's perfect on the bottom. And on the top, we have just enough clearance under the intake pipe to make this work. So we're going ahead and making a custom mounting bracket using some shelving uh, angle iron here. So we're gonna go ahead and weld these together so it's at the proper angle. Looks like my dad was working on some stainless brackets for the bottom while I was at work today. I just picked up a stainless connector here from uh, my local maple supply place. This third tube, I did a little bit of testing by pouring some fluid into this. It's actually just connected on the same side of the reservoir as the hot side. Instead of keeping that on the hot side, I'm actually going to use this connector here to tee it into the cold side so that I'll allow the oil cooler to run with cooler coolant rather than hotter coolant. So. What I'm gonna show you here is that this new radiator is sitting two to three inches lower than the stock setup. I'm not worried about this though because it's still level with the subframe and we still have plenty of ground clearance. The transfer case and the exhaust are the two lowest points on the car and this radiator is still sitting two to three inches above those. Alrighty guys, here are the welds on the top and the bottom brackets. Now the bottoms are not looking super pretty, so I am gonna completely remake these out of stainless another day when I have a bit more time. But for now, all the welds are holding very strong. And here's what that Y looks like for the outflow area. This is where the oil cooler pipe is gonna connect in. Up top here, I'll show you, we cut some blue bushings. These are four wheeler parts, and they're gonna work perfectly for our upper support. Really no play at all in this thing back and forth. I'm currently putting it back together in the dark. Got the front crash bar on, it's fitted. It's a very, very tight fit. My fingers between crash bar and intercooler. And while that's not entirely ideal, it's gonna have to be what it is until I can get a smaller intercooler. Just for sake of documentation, I did have to bend this horn bracket so that the horn was more forward and I had to bend it downward as well. The entire install is done. The car is cooling incredibly well. These new fans are much quieter than the stock fans. All things being taken into consideration with the brackets that we added, I believe that we've lost about two pounds from the stock setup, which in actuality does not sound like much, but you have to consider that we have installed a larger radiator and still lost weight. If I go ahead and remove this pipe, you can really see how much further forward this radiator is sitting. So much room to fit my hands in here. I mean, I could probably pull this power steering pump from the top if I needed to with the new fans on it. I hope you guys can see these fans down inside here. And this bracket is all nice and prettied up and uh, it's not terribly sharp. So as far as piping goes here, it's funny. We actually swapped hoses and switched a bottom over here. So the bottom hose fit almost perfectly. It needed about two and a half inches of length removed from the hose in order to make it work. So we got a uh, connector here. So this is inch and a quarter pipe. And on the bottom, on the Y, which you can sort of see right about there. Furthest over connection for the oil cooler. Now it's widened to the driver's side to help with keeping the oil cool. And it also helped us remove about eight inches from that tube anyway. The normal bottom side feed pipe from the normal section it's connected to, to about three quarters of the way and then snip it off. And in order to get the perfect fitment, we had to use the S-shaped elbow part of an upper radiator hose and cut that. I will go into the car and try to show you that here. See this, how it's like a perfect S shape that goes up and back over the uh, subframe there. The last thing I wanna talk about is upcoming steps on this car. Next step for the build, I wanna get a Mishimoto intercooler. So I'm probably going to get something that's much shorter, I guess, because the intercooler I have now, the DO88, it's very well built, it's very efficient, but it's kind of bulky for what I'm going for right now. I just wanna lose a lot of that weight in the front, have a lot more working room. The latch for the hood is closing and it's 
I can't even tell. It's so close to the intercooler that I'm worried about it making contact if anything starts to shift, and I really can't have that, so I need to go with a shorter intercooler. That's just the way it goes sometimes. In one of my next videos upcoming, I am going to be rebuilding the rear differential, the clutch pack. I found some racing spec clutches for the ELSD uh, in the back. With that, guys, thanks so much for watching the video. It means a lot when you like and subscribe, so go ahead and do that if you want to see more content. If there's anything sob related that you guys want to see, go ahead and leave it down in the comments or shoot me a message on Instagram. I'll leave it down here in the bottom left and uh, I'll see you in the next one.